You're listening to the Copywriter On Call podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Gillis, copywriter, word magic maker, and owner of What Sarah Said. On this podcast, you'll feel empowered to show up online in a way that has you saying, that's so me. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Copywriter On Call podcast today, my friends. I am logging some solo on-call hours to talk about what you need to know about attending an industry conference. Spoiler alert, it's all about choosing the right conference and setting realistic expectations. So let's dive in. So before you even think about attending a conference, you need to choose a conference and one that's right for you. Now, this episode is really timely because I have just recently gotten back from the Reset Conference, which this year was held in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it was a wonderful experience. And to ensure that it's a wonderful experience, you have to choose a conference that is right for you. Now, Reset is not new to me. This, I believe, is my third time attending. I think that's right. Um, And so for me, Reset is a great place to go because of the people that attend, okay? The Reset conference is a photography conference. So the people that attend are my ideal clients, right? I love to write for photographers, creatives in general, but especially photographers. And so it's a really great place for me to go to meet potential clients. But apart from that, There's also a like-mindedness that goes into why I continue to go back to Reset every year. I really appreciate the kind of people that Reset attracts. These people are people who check their egos at the door, who really want to genuinely connect and serve others, and who have kind of that... um, that heart first approach to business. Okay. And so when I go to reset, it's a place where I know that I'm going to find those like-minded people who appreciate what I do, right. From a business point of view, but who also appreciate who I am as a human being, which is a big deal. Um, It's also a place where a lot of my business friends go every year. And so it's, feels like a glorified family reunion of sorts because I get to see a lot of my friends and get to reconnect with them in person. And so Reset is, it continues to be a great place for me to go. Again, I believe this is my third year that I've gone. Um, I have plans to hopefully go next year. And so it's, it's a place that I continually like to be. After you choose a conference that's right for you, and again, don't be afraid to conduct your research here. Ask friends. If you see friends who are traveling to business conferences, feel free to ask them about their experience. That's something that I do all the time when I'm trying to determine what conferences to go to every year. And speaking of that, I go to conferences every year. And sometimes I try new ones. Sometimes I always go back to the old faithful, right? Like reset. But it's important that you ask for feedback or recommendations from people that you trust, people that are like you in terms of not just like you in business, but like you as a human, okay? People that you have things in common with, people who conduct their businesses with integrity like you do, and people who believe in showing up as themselves online. And so asking people you trust about the conferences that they go to, that's always a great way to get new conferences into your fold and to also really help make sure that you are propelling your business forward in the way that you want to grow. Okay. Now, after you choose a conference that's right for you, make sure that you budget for your travel costs. Every year when I am doing my yearly planning, I always take a look at what conferences are on my radar that year. This year, there were two or three that were on my radar. And so I was planning ahead to set aside some financial budget for those travel costs. Um, For instance, Michigan is a little bit of a jaunt for me. And I also knew that I was coming from a wedding. My husband's best friend from college got married right before the reset conference started. And so I knew that time wasn't necessarily on my side here. I was coming right from a wedding and going right to the conference. So I needed to budget for airfare. Now, maybe if I had been here at home in South Dakota, I could have drove. That would have been an option for me and probably would have saved me a little bit of money. But again, because I knew that this wedding was coming up, I was able to set realistic expectations for myself to know, okay, I need to get from here to there quickly. And so I need to set aside some money for a plane ticket here. 
Okay. On the other side of it, I also knew that my kiddo had a hockey tournament on the other side. So I, again, time wasn't on my side there. So I needed to get from here to there quickly. So those are pieces and parts that, again, you may not know all of the variables of your life in advance, but it is important to at least set aside some money in advance so that you are budgeting for travel costs that are realistic. Don't forget those meals, okay? Those meal costs as well. It's so fun to meet up with friends, to meet up with potential clients, to meet up with anyone that you know at these conferences and grab dinner together. And so budgeting for those meals as well is really important. The last tip that I have for you when it comes to setting your expectations and setting yourself up for success before you even get to the conference is to anticipate what kind of marketing needs you might have while you're there. This can be as simple as bringing along a stack of business cards or, you know, if you're fancy, getting yourself one of those like dot business cards, the digital ones that are so fancy. Um, I love that so much. So making sure that you are stocked up with those pieces. Um, also, a few years ago when I went to the Reset Conference for the first time, I was getting ready to enroll for the Content Huddle, my membership. And that's a perfect fit for photographers who are newer to my corner of the internet. And so I made sure to bring along a couple pieces and parts to help me pitch the content huddle to people that I feel I felt like would be a good fit, whether that's like a cutie little card or a sticker or some sort of something, making sure that you anticipate what you might need while you're there and meeting people is a great tactic. This year, I launched my digital shop, the What Sarah Said digital shop. If you haven't checked it out, you should go to whatsarahsaid.com slash shop. But anyways, I launched it right before I went to the Reset Conference. And so I had some cutie little cards with stickers on them with a coupon code to encourage people to check out the shop. So those are things that, again, you can anticipate in advance. And if it's the first time you're attending a conference, you might not be able to anticipate these as beautifully as you want to. Again, I've been going to Reset for three years. And so I feel like I understand pretty well what I need or what I will need. But don't be afraid to, you know, throw a little bit of money at creating some sort of a business card or some sort of a landing spot. Even if you meet people at um, a conference and you just have a page on your website that you've created with some links on it and, um, you know, some just some human connection type pieces like, hi, this is who I am. This is where I've been. This is what I do. This is how I love to serve people. Even just creating a page on your website that's, you know, hidden, not part of your navigation menu, but is ready in case someone wants to learn more about you. And it feels special. It feels different than them just going to your about page because it's created just for this conference. That could be a really nice touch as well. All right, those are my tips for before you actually get to the conference. Now, let's talk about what happens when you are actually there at the conference, okay? It's important, obviously, to do the thing that you're there for, to meet people, immerse yourself in the environment. I will be totally honest with you, sometimes this is really hard, okay? We are busy people. We're busy business owners. Some of us are mamas and wives and all of the things, and we wear a lot of hats. And so it can be a lot for us to step away from our lives and immerse ourselves in a new environment, if it's a new conference especially. And so give yourself some grace, but at the same time, try to immerse yourself in the environment. Try to stay focused on each speaker's topic. Try to engage with the people that are next to you, the people that are presenting with you, and try to be a present human be present in conversation between all of the presentations, but also be present when you are just communicating over dinner or over coffee or just, you know, gathering together in a shared space. Try to be a present human. In addition, I'd love to have you think through what your expectations are coming out of the conference. This is obviously a thing that you should think about before you attend, but also during and after, okay? This is kind of my main point here. When you are going to a conference, I want you to set your expectations realistically. I also wanna just touch on something here. When it comes to your return on your investment, because let's face it, conferences are not cheap. It's an investment, right? But I want you to keep your ROI, your return on investment expectations a little bit low, okay? Don't expect to walk out with a fully booked calendar, a bunch of new clients. It can happen, but to expect that 
is different, okay? I think that you want to leave your energy open to connecting with someone on a human level, on a business level, and having that person decide to walk into your space on the internet and work with you in any capacity, whether it's, you know, downloading a freebie you have or engaging with your membership or paying you for your high ticket offer. Just make sure that you keep your expectations realistic. And sometimes that means just taking them a little bit lower. Now, I don't want to say that conferences are definitely not the place to get clients. You definitely can get clients. It's just that I don't like to operate from that mentality as this is the reason I'm attending to get clients. Now, the first time that I went to the reset conference was in 2022. And I called this like my coming out party of sorts because I had recently decided that I was moving away from working with real estate professionals and was focusing instead on photographers. I wrote for a few photographers and really felt so aligned. And so I wanted to step into that a little bit more. So why not attend a photography conference? Okay. Now I didn't walk in expecting to, you know, have a bunch of clients on my roster after I walked out, but I did walk away with three new clients from that first conference experience. Now that's because I diligently worked hard on marketing myself as a person who was attending this conference, as a person who worked with and understood photographers, and as a person who was open to scheduling meetings, client meetings at the reset conference. Okay. And so this was a a wonderful opportunity for me to kind of dip my toes into the conference game. I, this was the first conference I attended that was photographer specific. I had attended many, many, many different academic conferences when I was teaching. I had attended many different conferences when I was in social media. And so this was a different type of conference, but I was familiar with what it meant to be at a conference. I knew how everything was scheduled. I knew all of the pieces and parts that go into planning a conference. And I knew that I would have some moments and some off time where I could schedule some meetings if needed. Now, again, my expectation was not to walk out with booking new clients. Again, this was my coming out party. This was me stepping into this new niche, into this new space of working with photographers and saying, I'm here. I'd love to work with you. I'd love to serve you. I love what you do and believe in what you do. And I would love to put words to that magic. Okay. Now I walked out with three paying clients and it was wonderful, but that is not my expectation. Okay. I don't approach any sort of conference, any sort of interaction, frankly, with anyone expecting them to be a paying client, especially not a high ticket paying client. Okay. I want to engage with people as human beings. I want to breathe life and hope and belief into what they do. And I want to support them as a human being, as a business owner, sure, but also as a human being. And that's who I am. That's who I want to, you know, project myself as when I meet people in person. I want the person that they meet, quote unquote, online to be the same person that they meet when they see me in person. And so it's not about ROI for me necessarily. Of course, I'd love to come out with clients, but that's not my intention. That's not the energy I'm putting out into the world when I attend a conference. I hope that makes sense. The last piece that I want to encourage you to do when you are at a conference is to take your time to engage not only with your fellow attendees, but with the speakers and the conference hosts. Okay. Now I've not attended like super humongous conferences, except for when I was a teacher, um, where you didn't have interaction with the conference hosts. That's one wonderful thing about the Reset Conference is that you do have that connectivity both to the speakers and to the gals who host the conference. And that is wonderful. That is something that is important to me. I want to know that there are humans on the other side of all of the conference marketing materials and all of the pretty rooms and all of the, you know, well curated speaker rosters. I want to know that there's human beings on the other side. Same with the speakers I hear from behind the pretty presentations and all of the beautiful Canva slides. I want to know that there is a human being on the other side of that business. And The Reset Conference does a wonderful job, as do many other conferences I've attended, of really allowing you the opportunity to connect with speakers and with the conference hosts themselves. If what's being shared in this episode is inspiring you to bring more of your personality into how you show up online, I've got a quiz for you. 
Head over to whatsarahsaid.com slash quiz and discover your brand voice type so that you can feel confident in standing out through your words. This quiz will help you uncover the brand voice that's already within you. So your words can finally have you and your dream clients saying, that's so me. Knowing your brand voice type means you'll have full permission to ditch the proper and polite copy if your authentic voice is actually quirky and fun. Your brand voice is what I call word magic because honing it creates literal magic for you and your dream clients. Plus, after your brand voice type is revealed, you'll get access to five free social media prompts to help you share your voice right away. So what are you waiting for? Take this fun quiz now at whatsarahsaid.com slash quiz. All right, so far we've covered what you should do before you get to a conference and while you're there. Now let's talk about what happens after the conference. My biggest recommendation is to give yourself a day to re-enter your life and your work, okay? This year at the Reset Conference, I didn't participate in the styled shoots, which is on day three. Obviously, I'm not a photographer, okay? So I wasn't like picking up my camera and doing that. But I did engage with a lot of my friends, a lot of my photographer friends and clients who were doing these styled shoots. And so I was around on Wednesday. I was working on other things, really kind of downloading all of my thoughts from the conference, but I was around, I was available. The next day, however, I was more removed. That was a day for me to just kind of rest and relax before I went into hockey mom mode. Cause again, I had a hockey tournament on the other side for my kiddo, but I can't encourage you enough to take a day and just download your thoughts, give yourself a day to rest, to recover. I mean, it's a lot to people. (laughs) Peopling is a lot. And so giving yourself the time to really exhale and understand that you need that time to recover, whether you are a people person or not, whether you're extroverted or not, you need that time to kind of exhale and realize that you just did a big thing. You attended a conference that required you to put yourself out there. And that can be an uncomfortable thing sometimes. And so giving yourself a day to slowly re-enter, whether it's life or work or both, is a really, really important piece. The other thing that I always encourage people to do after conferences is to follow up with the people you met, but not in a salesy way, okay? I was so blessed to meet a bunch of people at the Reset Conference this time, and I will follow up with them as a human being, okay? As a human being first, not in a salesy way, okay? So if we had a great conversation at the conference, I would build on that conversation and hop into their DMs and really just kind of revisit that same conversation. Or I would simply send them an email and say, I really enjoyed meeting you. I really enjoyed sharing dinner with you. That coffee was great. Thanks so much for taking time to meet with me. Even just like small little touch points like that help to build a human connection. And again, not salesy here. We don't want it to be an ick vibe. We want it to feel good. We want it to feel like a friendship is forming. And who says you can't have friendships that end up paying you money, right? I've had many, many, many friends, many, many clients turn into friends and vice versa. I've had friends turn into clients. And so it's a beautiful thing to speak on a human level and just engage that way. And that includes after you get back from a conference. There are many friendships I've had that have started at conferences and it started there because it wasn't salesy. It was simply a relationship I was building. And if it leads to money, great, but that's not the point. You're a human first. Okay. The other two pieces that I recommend doing after a conference, number one, make sure you do a brain dump of what you've learned, what you want to implement in your business. Okay. When you come out of a conference, you can feel like your brain is just spinning. There's so many new ideas, so many exciting things that you want to implement in your business that it can be really easy to feel overwhelmed, to not know where to start, or to to really get clouded by that shiny object syndrome, right? We all want to do all the things right now, please. And it can be really frustrating sometimes creatively to come out of a conference and be like, okay, I have to do this. I have to change the way I do that. I need to, you know, optimize this, systemize that. Take a deep breath and do a brain dump. 
I like to do this immediately after I get back from a conference, but I also like to do another sort of brain dump when I get maybe five days after the conference. What is still sticking in my mind? What is something that is still interesting to me, that I'm still thinking about, that I'm still wondering about? Those are the things that perhaps I investigate a little bit deeper. Is that going to work for my business, for my life, for my clients at this point? And if there's something that is a pie in the sky dream that you learned about, awesome. Write it down, keep it somewhere safe. For me, that's my notes app on my phone, but it's not something that I'm necessarily going to implement today. There are certainly things I've learned at conferences that I'm like, yes, please, now. But there are other things that I'm like, ooh, that will be great if, when, this. Okay, so just make sure you capture those ideas somewhere. So determine which ideas are a yes now, please, and which ideas are a someday maybe. The last thing, ask yourself, would I attend this conference again? It's important to really be honest with your thoughts and to download them again in that kind of two day, three day, four day time frame, but also maybe a week or two after the conference. What did you really enjoy about the conference? What were maybe the parts and pieces that you didn't love as much? And would you make this same choice again? If this conference happened again next year, would you be raising your hand to say, yes, please? Or would you say, mm, I'm going to see who the speakers are. I'm going to see where the location is. I'm going to see when this conference is. I'm going to see if it fits in my life. Or I'm going to see where I'm at in business next year. These are all really good things to consider, but again, asking yourself both immediately after and then a few weeks after is a great way to really evaluate, do I want to attend this conference again? Okay, so I hope that all of these tips were helpful for you as you're thinking about conferences. Obviously, I wholeheartedly believe in attending conferences on a regular basis. I love investing in my own education. I love learning. I love meeting people. I love seeing friends and conferences can be a great way to do all of those things. So thanks so much for listening to the Copywriter On Call podcast. I want to tell you this episode marks the end of season three, but don't fret. I will be back in your earbuds in July with more value packed episodes about marketing your business through word magic. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. And this is your copywriter on call signing off for season three. Thanks for listening to the copywriter on call podcast. If this episode has you feeling all sorts of inspired to show up as yourself online, click that subscribe button so you don't miss my stories or practical advice to help you express your quirky, vulnerable and authentic self online. Chat soon.